Welcome to this edition of Audio App. I'm Jim Schwartz, Director of PFR and Agronomy here at Bex Hybers. With me today is Travis Burnett. Travis is Northern Indiana Field Agronomist for Bex Hybrids. And Travis, here at Bex, we've spent a lot of time over the years talking about lowering your seeding rates, especially with early planting dates. But as the planting is delayed here in our marketing area, that message may change. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so before I get into uh, how that message may change, I want to first touch on why the lower seeding rates is, is working and why that's driving profitability on the farm. Um, so lower seeding rates are, are working, particularly with early planting, um, simply because yield potential or soybean yields in general are driven by node production per acre. Okay, so typically when we think about populations or stands with soybeans, we talk about plants, number of plants per acre. Um, but that doesn't always directly correlate uh, with soybeans because soybeans produce multiple nodes per plant and planting date greatly influences how many nodes per plant are, are produced. Okay, so uh, soybeans are photoperiod sensitive. So what that means is they move from vegetative to reproductive stages based off of the length of day or length of night. Um, so summer solstice is what? June 21st, I believe. Okay, so uh, after the days start getting shorter, that's when reproductive or soybeans start moving into those reproductive stages. Uh, so with early planting, we spend more time, or the soybean plant spends more time in those vegetative stages, essentially producing more nodes per plant. Uh, and that's why lower seeding rates are are, are uh, more profitable or more desirable, um, simply because there's a, it's cost savings associated with the, the seed, seed costs. Okay, we have lower seed costs, producing the same, essentially the same number of nodes per acre or, or same same amount of bushels potential per acre. Uh, and that's what's driving the profitability. Now, as planting is delayed and, and pushed back further here, uh, we're, we're going to spend less time in those vegetative stages prior to moving into the reproductive stages. So we will not produce as many nodes per plant. Therefore, to, more plants are going to be required for uh, maximizing that no production per acre or maximizing yield potential per acre. Um, so essentially, our recommendation would be as we move into later planting, by later planting, I mean after May 1st, okay? So every week past that first week of May, uh, we'd recommend that you increase seeding rates by about 10,000 seeds per acre. Um, so for instance, say we don't get planted till uh, the last week of May, um, you're going to essentially be planting 30,000 more seeds per acre uh, than what your original target population would have been in order to maximize uh, yield potential. Um, now there's lots of PFR data that would help support this. Um, so if you compare our economic optimum seeding rate for soybeans, uh, typically we talk about 100,000 being the economic optimum. Uh, we're not saying that's the most uh, optimum uh, seeding rate for every acre uh, by any means, but uh, those are with early plantings, okay, early planting dates, uh, the lower populations. Now you compare that to our um, double cropping uh, economic optimum seeding rate, where the economic optimum is like somewhere around 240 or 260,000 seeds per acre. Uh, so that's essentially capturing that what I'm talking about there on the number of nodes produced per plant. Um, later plantings delay, we need more plants to increase uh, the amount of nodes produced per acre. So bottom line, early planting, we can get by with cutting back our seeding rates. Later planting, as we continue to push into May here, we need to start increasing. If I remember what you said, uh, basically it's 10,000 for every week or 1,000 per day, roughly, mm -hmm. past May 1st. We need to start bumping those seeding rates up. Absolutely. Seed treatment. I, I have a lot of guys saying, ah, I can skip the seed treatment. What would you recommend as it relates to seed treatments moving into May? Um, seed treatments are still important, especially if you think of the reasons why we're delayed planting, right? So uh, the reasons we're not in the field currently is because it's too wet, right? And these saturated soil conditions. Um, so in these adverse conditions, when uh, the early vegetative development's delayed, seed treatments are still very important uh, to help help get us through those those periods where that plant's growing very slowly. Uh, Typically, uh, that, that's the case with the, the saturated soil conditions and even cool soil conditions in a lot of, a lot of parts of our marketing area up to this point. So yeah. uh, seed treatments are still a vital vital piece in, in establishing uh, a good stand with soybeans. So as we move into, into May, Travis, increase our seeding rates, maintain seed treatments. I know Bex, all, all our soybeans come treated with escalate yield enhancement system because we realize that even later planting does not guarantee a disease-free environment. Correct. All right, for this edition of Audio App, Jim Schwartz here with Northern Indiana agronomist Travis Burnett. Thanks, Travis. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.